Hi right, guys. Well, it is an exciting Saturday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Uh, an exciting Saturday night. Uh, where I just fucked up. Fun, fucking believable. Well, anyway, I didn't really want to do that goddamn story because I know everybody else in the uh, Doomosphere is doing that story tonight about the Arctic warming up four times faster than previously thought. I'm going to turn that one over to Sandy and Jennifer for tomorrow night, and I'm sure Paul is talking about it. And anyway... As long as I'm sitting here at a laundromat and an empty laundromat sitting here alone on a uh, Saturday night and I think I have 18 minutes to kill. I'm uh, washing sheets for my Airbnb uh, here on. That's what I'm doing on my exciting Saturday night washing sheets. Imagine that. It is... Saturday night, August 13th, uh, as a matter of fact, and it might be warming up in the Arctic, but it is a nice cool night tonight, and I want to talk about this video that Lieutenant Tom sent me from uh, last night, and you know, and I can't play what I wanted to do was you know play clips from it and talk about it but of course I can't risk the goddamn copyright violation uh, so what it was I can't remember the name something like the gravel institute or something I don't know someplace I would never heard of but uh, they were featuring this talk by this woman named you probably heard of her Marianne Williamson who is I think that she actually was one of the 500 Democratic candidates uh, a few years back. Mary Ann Williamson, you know, she uh, wrote this thing called The Course in Miracles. Uh, how many years ago? She doesn't look that old. I mean, the woman looks damn good, to tell you the truth. Uh, I didn't know what a haughty Mar Marianne Williamson is, and uh, so I don't know how old this woman is. Maybe in her 50s. Uh, but what she was talking about was the epidemic of loneliness in uh, this country, and assumedly on this planet, but she was talking mostly about this country. I don't know if you... If you heard my, uh, well, not my rant, but Cindy Conaway's rant yesterday, uh, was picking up on that theme that Cindy was talking about in that, uh, in, in that comment yesterday about, uh, j just how we're fucked. And, you know, <laughs> I'm sitting here, you know, truly trying to analyze how I got to this place in my life. Sitting alone in an empty laundromat uh, on a Saturday night in some fucking hellhole uh, in, in the middle of fucking nowhere. I, I, I mean, there is nothing nothing that fucking uh, illustrates the epidemic of loneliness and uh, th this word they kept using and I noticed Cindy used, I have to look this word up I guess is atomization uh, I guess Cindy and Marianne are supposed to I, I I only have five years of college and a journalism degree and years as a writer and I am not sure what atomization means, but I'm pretty sure 
I am atomized. I'm going to take a wild guess that I am atomized. Whatever the fuck that means, I am probably it. Uh, and so, what choices did I make in my life that one month before my 63rd birthday that I, that I am the only person out of 8 billion people sitting at this fucking laundromat uh, on this Saturday night washing sheets uh, for this Airbnb. So who I have in the Airbnb right now is this uh, real cute young couple. I'm, I'm guessing 23, 24 years old. Uh, celebrating their second wedding anniversary. It is their, I'm not sure why you get married on the 13th of the month, but uh, that, that, that takes balls. So anyway, they have made it two years, this uh, cute young couple, this bubbly young couple. They're all excited and out of everywhere on the planet to, uh, to spend their wedding anniversary. Uh, is at Bugs in a Jar Farm Tiny House, so I'm sure I'm going to have some fucking sheets to clean up from the tiny house tomorrow. Uh, normally, you know, when people check out of the Airbnb, I just sleep on their sheets. I, I, I don't even change the fucking sheets because I don't want to spend the time and energy and money at the fucking laundromat, but something tells me I will be... Uh, I will be washing these sheets. Okay, we have someone joining me at the laundromat, so I have to be a little quieter. See if it's... No, it's a dude about my age. Some guy about my age on his cell phone. Uh, let me uh, roll up the window here. Don't, don't, maybe... Uh, so, uh... <laughs> Anyway, while I'm sitting here alone uh, watching the sheets go round and round, I have this uh, nice young couple with their whole life ahead of them. Yes, selling, celebrating two years of marital bliss. It's going to be my 39th wedding anniversary one week from today. Uh, 39 years that I would have been married to that little bitch. Oh, God. And, you know, as, as big a fucking hole as I am in, in my life, in my atomized, lonely fucking life of this pointless existence, uh, compared to being in a bad marriage... This feels like a, a, a fucking Howdy Doody cartoon. Uh, Jesus. You talk about a fucking pit of despair. Uh, you know, Marianne talking, uh, you know, last night. Kind of, kind of, I guess Cindy Conaway, maybe she just listened to that Marianne thing because... You know, Marianne was repeating what Cindy had said, that fentanyl overdoses are the number one. I don't know where this factoid comes from. I have not done the research to check this fact. But twice yesterday, uh, I was told that fentanyl overdoses uh, were, is the number one cause of death of Americans age 18 to 45. Now, I don't know how many of those, I mean, they don't have it split up between suicides and accidental overdoses. Uh, so I don't know what the number of, you know, how many times have I said, if someone walked up to me right now and said, uh, Hambun, I'll give you uh, $10,000 to go get me a hit of fentanyl, I, I have no more idea how to score some fentanyl uh, than, than I do, you know, how to, how to score 
some uh, little hottie like the one uh, in my tiny house, probably giving a blowjob to that dude uh, in, in my fucking tiny house right now while I'm sitting here with my goddamn thumb up my ass talking to my imaginary little friends on YouTube. Uh, but it's a good video. I'm sure you can find it. Uh, Marianne Williamson, and she kept saying that the point she was making is that this is not normal. Uh, that the that it's not normal that fentanyl overdoses are should be the number one cause of death uh, in the country, and you know the skyrocketing rates of depression and suicide, and mainly talking about you know, younger people that, uh, I, I guess the, the, I don't know, the 12 to 30 year olds or whatever, just as how more and more young people just is leading these absolute desolate fucking lonely lives with, with all of this goddamn social media, <clears throat> You know, and, and, and that nobody that we have just lost fucking human connections like, you know, here, here's this dude next to me uh, yakking away on his goddamn phone sitting in, in front of a fucking uh, laundromat. So at least I'm not alone at the laundromat. Uh, uh, we're, we're both just sitting out in our cars watching our fucking clothes spin and uh, making a metaphor for my fucking life, watching these fucking sheets just go round and around and around. I feel like these fucking sheets just going around and around, thinking about that little hottie in my fucking uh, tiny house. Oh, Jesus, and... And what that guy is doing uh, in, in that fucking tiny house and that goddamn mattress. I'll never get any pussy on. I've had that fucking mattress, what, for four years. I wonder how many people uh, out there in that tiny house have fucked on that mattress. I will, as far as I, I mean, as far as I know, I see no reason why I should ever fuck on my own mattress. Uh, God. But uh, anyway, back to back to that video, which you really should watch. I mean, it's standing alone. It, I mean, it, it, it's a pretty grim, but it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good Doomer chick. Oh, this dude has his dog with him in the car. Isn't that sweet? So we have two. We have two uh, lonely old farts on Saturday night. But their dogs, there's a dog over there like that. There's a dog party over there. He's got his dog too. Do you see the dog over there? And uh, we got our little dogs. And uh, but that uh, the video, it had two commercial breaks. Okay, and so <laughs> you know she's talking about the existential abyss and, and uh, the, you know, the lives of despair or is it the deaths of despair, and, you know, talking about all of these young people uh, on their fucking social media and, and, and their fucking apps and, and all of this shit, uh, how uh, young people have lost the ability to make real life human connections. And it breaks for the commercial right when she's in this, this. There's no way this is fucking accidental. No way it's fucking accidental. Right while she's talking about this, you know, it just breaks this rude fucking uh, intrusion by this goddamn commercial. And what do you see? You, you see this young woman, this attractive young woman holding a smartphone and the commercial is about some fucking new app on her smartphone. Is the fucking commercial in, in the you know in the middle of the section of the video where Marianne's talking about uh, 
young people uh, being buried up to their fucking clueless moron asses uh, with, with, with their goddamn smartphones. So then it goes on for a while, and then she, this video is about 30 minutes long. Uh, so then Marianne, she's getting there, you know, talking about, you know, chasing the almighty dollar, climbing the corporate ladder, and, and just showing uh, people at work uh, just hunched over their fucking desk, uh, dreaming about a fentanyl overdose. And what do you, then it breaks for a commercial. And what do you think the commercial is about? It, it, it's tailored towards young women trying to climb the corporate ladder and about basically how you get ahead. Uh, there, there's no way that I've been talking for 18 minutes. So one of the dryers, I had these two dryers. Maybe it's been 18 minutes, so I got to go uh, just go in here and check my uh oh i guess it has been i guess i'm fine to sit here so you guys can uh you guys can see my life that dude just got yanked his clothes out of the dryer and left with his dog so this is my life on a saturday night uh while Marianne Williamson is talking about the epidemic of loneliness. All right. Those seem to be dry. All right. Well, where am I going to put this camera? We can, uh... <laughs> All right. This is Hambone. This is the famous YouTube star. Do you think Guy McPherson... Uh... How much time does Guy McPherson spend at the fucking laundromat washing uh, other people's cum stains out of sheets? Out of his sheets. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. So, uh, anyway, so it, it was it was the video, it, it was the commercials in the middle of the video that I, you know, the comment I left on the video that the the best part of the whole video were the commercials because the commercials were the absolute uh, perfect illustration of everything. Uh, on one hand, the uh, commercials were the absolute perfect illustration of everything that Marianne Williamson was talking about. Uh, but the, uh, of course, my appreciation of the commercials was the irony, was the sick, twisted irony that, you know, this, that this was a, a paid video. And it was just this cynical, ironic, uh, you know, that, that the, these corporations and these cell phone companies that are responsible, according to Mary Ann, for, for the problems she's talking about, are making money off of the video, and then assumedly, uh, Mary Ann Williamson, or at least the, whoever, the YouTube channel it is, whatever the name of this institute or whatever, it is making money off of the, the, the very goddamn uh, the, the goddamn thing that Marianne's talking about. Uh, because loneliness, uh, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of fucking money to be made in loneliness. 
uh, that you better believe the global corporatocracy is uh, cashing in on uh, the fucking epidemic of loneliness. Oh, Jesus. So while I was washing my clothes, I had the, uh, the uh, existential despairing experience of going to the family dollar on a Saturday night and uh, looking at my fellow shoppers looking at my fellow shoppers at a family dollar store on Saturday night. I, I mean, the, just, the, just the absolute bleakness. Uh, absolutely bleak. Uh, family dollar, this dude in front of me. I mean, he's a fentanyl overdose waiting to happen. Uh, I, I mean, just, just looking at the dude shopping. Of course, I have no room to talk. I was right next to him shopping. You know what I'm saying. While my fucking sheets were washing. But uh, this dude, he just had that look of a fentanyl overdose waiting to happen. God. I mean, guys were fucked. I mean, th th this is this is my fucking life. Sitting there. This is it. This is what I fucking manifested. No. Somehow, everyone else on the planet has managed not to manifest being in this fucking depressing ass laundromat on a Saturday night. I am the one person on the planet who's managed to manifest being in this laundromat. Ugh, Jesus Christ. So anyway, I guess we're about a month out from the big party. Five weekends from this weekend is the big Doomer meetup that bugs in the jar. And that'll be my one attempt at at uh, having a fucking a fucking social life this entire summer. I'm thinking of the goddamn parties going on right now in Austin, Texas with all my clueless, lovable friends having a picking party in Austin, Texas. When I'm sitting here washing fucking sheets for some uh, young married couple to get cum stains all over. What a fucking life. Oh, fuck. I mean... <laughs> I mean, I, I, I guess this is my fucking life. This is the life I have carved out for myself, guys. As the, uh... As the Arctic warms four times faster than the rest of the fucking world. As the Amazon rainforest burns to a fucking crisp. As what is it, I guess, five million people in Somalia facing starvation. But I got sheets to wash. I've got sheets to wash so all of these cute young couples will have clean sheets to fuck on. 
I am so glad I'm doing my part to keep the uh, the young people who have not managed to uh, kill themselves with a fentanyl overdose. Happy. Oh, God damn it, this flannel pillowcase is not fucking, everything is dry except the flannel fucking pillowcase. I should have known. Oh, fuck. I ain't putting it back in there. I'm getting the fuck out of here. So anyway, there you have it. Anybody who wants to know what it's like to be a famous YouTube star talking about the collapse of a planet, this is... Uh, See, ladies, this is what this could be your life. Uh, all these doomer chicks lining up the gaping mall of the electric dryer. Oh, fuck. We're so fucked people. I, I mean, who needs fucking Schopenhauer? Who needs shop when you've got this? There's still some in here. Wow. I might just take that. There you go. Oh, Actually, the woman who owns this place is a little bit of a, a little bit of a doomer chick. Uh, hilariously enough, talked to her on the phone a couple of times. Yes. Ah, oh, Jesus. Where the fuck can I go find some fentanyl in this town? Surely, surely I can get one hit of fentanyl in this fucking hell hole. Look at what we've created, people. This is it. The American dream. No Canadian coins. Oh, we have a new owner. The Doomer chick has sold out to some dude named Keith. Oh, fuck. My life. Get out there and uh, score some fentanyl while you still can. Bye, guys.